Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Pro Football Hall of Fame for our latest edition of the Before the Snap program. If this is your first time tuning in, let me tell you, you are in for a treat. And if you're a return viewer, thank you for being loyal and coming back to hear from our new and latest guest, uh, a little bit about her career and what she does in and around the game of football. My name is Nathan Martin, and I'll be your host or moderator for the day. Um, if you watch this regularly, you're used to seeing Jake. He's the main guy, and I'm just kind of off on the side. I guess you could say I'm a co-host, but Jake is, you know, he's really struggling. He's out in Arizona right now um, doing some work for us here at the Hall related to our newest class members and the Super Bowl. So it'll just be me today here uh, moderating the program. But we're so excited to have everybody tuning in to this edition of Before the Snap. Um, if you're not familiar with the program, you're going to get to hear kind of what takes place behind the scenes to make uh, the game of football, the game that we love so much, uh, the game that it is, all the behind the scenes work, uh, the work that goes in before the snap. Um, and and I got to thank several people uh, before we get started. I want to thank first and foremost, our special guest, Maria from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to uh, answer my questions, answer our students' questions, and hopefully provide a little bit of insight into what your what I would say is pretty unique job and unique career, um, what goes into that and, and the work that you're doing there with the Steelers. So thank you, Maria. I want to thank uh, students uh, for participating today. First and foremost, thank you for watching. That We love that participation. But let's take it another step. I thank you guys in advance for submitting questions. We want to hear from you guys. Let us know where you're watching it from, what schools and universities that you're tuning in from. So thank you for being a part of the program. And then lastly, I want to thank the teachers, administrators, professors, whoever kind of shared this program and helped us promote this program. Thank you um, for doing that for us. You know, here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you know, our mission is to honor the greatest of the game, the greatest players, to preserve the history of the game. We are a museum at our core, but we also want to promote the values that the game teaches and to celebrate excellence together. And I think we'll be able to do um, really those last two, especially we're going to promote the values the game teaches, because I think uh, the values that make someone a great running back or wide receiver in the NFL are the same values that make somebody um, a great youth and education coordinator, um, or in Maria's case, an international content manager. Um, those values apply across uh, the different types of careers out there. And we want to celebrate the excellence that she brings to her career. But en enough with that intro, you know, I want to get you guys into uh, the program and get to talk to Maria a little bit. So um, we are lucky today to be joined by Maria Rodriguez, um, the international content manager for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Maria is a Honduras native who began her career in sports while attending Texas Christian University. Rough, rough finish to the season there for TCU, but proud, proud alumna from uh, Texas Christian. She completed a strategic communication bachelor's degree there at TCU. Uh, she spent her past six years since graduating from TCU, growing the Pittsburgh Steelers international fan base through social and digital content, as well as fan activations overseas. She's a passionate uh, individual when it comes to the sports industry, and she loves connecting people um, both locally and around the world. So with that, Maria, thank you so much for being our, our latest, our, our greatest guest uh, here on Before the Snap. Hi, Nathan. Thank you so much for having me. Honestly, it's truly an honor to be a part of this Before the Snap program. Thank you to the Hall of Fame. Thank you to you, Nathan and Jake and Blair Holmes from uh, my community team here at the Steelers for including me in this incredible program. I am super honored. Uh, to be here with you guys. Thank you for spending some time with me today and your interest in learning about me and my career path and my background. Like Nathan mentioned, I am from Honduras, born and raised. I moved to the United States when I was 18 to go to TCU. Um, yes, rough end of the football season for TCU, but definitely super proud horn frog over here. Um, after my time at TCU, actually during my time at TCU, that's where I fell in love with football. Sports have always been a part of my life, um, but I grew up watching predominantly soccer for the most part. It's the most popular sport in Honduras. My brother was an incredible soccer player growing up and through college as well. So my family, uh, we kind of just grew up, you know, watching him and encouraging him and basically following my brother's passion. We all took that in in our family. So we uh, watched sports every single game you can think of. And then. Uh, I had that in me. And when I went to TCU, 2014 was TCU's 
last big run after before this year. Um, they had an incredible season 2014. I, you know, was blessed enough to be a student during that time and witness that I never missed a home game. And I remember being in the stadium uh, against Oklahoma University and I had a moment where I was like, man, this is incredible. Like I just had a spark, I guess, being in that stadium. And I kind of had a feeling uh, that I wanted to, to be in a stadium for, you know, for a long time and working in football. I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't really know what it meant to work in sports other than being a coach or an athlete. Um, I didn't really um, have an idea of all the career options that, you know, are in sports. So I had to learn that. And I went home that day after that game and I researched the TCU athletic department and I got my first, uh, internship on paid internship to work as a social media intern on game days. I did that for about six months. That was my very first experience in sports. And I think it all kicked off from there. Uh, I went through my last three years in college pursuing that. Um, and I was blessed enough to end up with the Steelers and the Steelers. Uh, I've been with the Steelers since I graduated from college. I came into the Steelers as an intern. I did a two year internship from 2017 to 20. Uh, 19 and I've been here ever since I eventually became a coordinator and now I'm a manager so um, it's been a fun ride over the past six years a lot of growth uh, coming from the NFL as well and the global expansion efforts from the NFL so that is basically what I do now as an international content manager um, everything that I do it's basically to uh, globalize the NFL and the Steelers brand. So you, you you gave us a lot there, you know, and I love that you kind of walked through uh, your background, where you're from, your college experience, and now what you do. And we're going to dive into each kind of component of that a little bit. Um, but you mentioned your college experience. I want to start there. Um, at TCU, you got a strategic communication degree. Um, and I think a lot of our students maybe would think, oh, if I'm going to work in sports, I have to have sport management or sport business. So when you were majoring in that at TCU, what was the dream job? Why did you choose that major? And then how do you see that major and that degree helping you in your work that you do now with the Pittsburgh Steelers and in the sports industry? Yeah, you know, like I said, I fell in love with football being a student at TCU. So I didn't have that vision right away. It was a process, but what I always knew uh, going into that, I always saw myself working for a well-known, reputable organization. I saw myself, uh, you know, being creative with that. I didn't know what that meant, but creativity was something that was always important for me. And I got to learn a little bit more of business and business management while I was in school, taking core classes. And I thought strategic communication was a perfect mix of that because PR is a part of it. Advertising is a part of it. Business is a part of it. And how you bring, you know, the creative side of business, I think, uh, was what caught my attention from this degree. And it was a perfect mix. And at that time, I always had at the back of my mind the entertainment industry. But, you know, there's a lot that can go into that, Where the, whether if it's, um, you know, event management or movies or sports, of course. And then I had the opportunity to explore that, of course, at TCU. And that's where it all almost clicked, where it's like, all right, I know I can do this in sports. And I learned that, you know, social media also growing in media relations and the marketing side of it with ticketing and keeping, you know, alumni uh, engaged at TCU at that time. What makes alumni come back to campus to go to a game? Uh, how do you keep, you know, TCU fans engaged if you're not a student or on campus. So I learned all of those things uh, being a student there. And um, I think it just it just all clicked. And I, you know, you hear a lot that a lot of people don't use their degree on a daily basis, that they majored in something that they don't end up working. And that is not my case. Uh, I fortunate to fall in love with my career and that I can use every single skill that I that I learned at my job now uh specifically with just campaign planning and um bringing 
different components of what that is together through media releases and media relationships and um, campaign building and ticket sales and working with sponsorship teams and working with different stakeholders like our players and coaches and the Steelers and how we bring all of that together was a big part of everything that I learned in strategic communications and how we bring it all alive and how it all connects from, you know, um, what the goals are internally from an organization to selling a ticket to a game that a fan will eventually want to come. Um, and I do that now at a global scale with, uh, with the Steelers. So um, it is a truly important, important skill that I learned as well with, within my degree, learning how to communicate me being from Honduras, coming into a different culture, a different country, and, uh, just learning how to communicate with, uh, the audience that you're trying to target with, with what you're doing. Now, I want to stay kind of in this same vein, I guess, with the conversation, because we're getting a couple questions from our students related to majors and, and, you know, some of them, you know, have already picked their major or they're trying to decide their major. So first let's start, what would be, I guess, your number one piece of advice, um, what do I major in? How do I know what to major in? What's going to be my best fit? How would you advise a potential, you know, high school student or, you know, freshman or sophomore trying to pick a major? How do they, how do they make that tough decision? For sure. Uh, to be honest with you, I did not declare my major until my sophomore year. Um, I knew creativity was something that was very important for me. I have a drawing and painting background. So initially I thought I wanted to be an artist and or like an interior designer or an architect and I do have that in me that creativity um, but I remember my dad telling me like hey I think it's important for you to explore if you're not 100% sure um, I knew creativity was important but I didn't have that specific vision and so thankfully I listened and I went into my freshman year taking you know with your core classes you have options and I took a business administration class and uh, a drawing class as well. I wanted to keep that creativity there as well. And then I learned like, wow, business is really cool. And uh, I learned, you know, like I said, the creative side of business as well and different things that, you know, things that are important to you, like creativity was in that sense for me. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean what you think it is right away. So I would advise if you're unsure, undecided, don't stress too much. Don't put on a lot of pressure on yourself on knowing if you don't know, if you know for sure that that's what that, you know, the career path you're pursuing, uh, it's what you want. That's incredible. Um, but if you don't, you know, just take a step back and explore, you have options, take the time to explore your core classes, seek guidance from your parents, your loved ones, your career uh, counselor in school and just take the time to do it. And I graduated a semester later than the rest of my classmates did. So also that's that's okay. Know that you don't have to be on time. You're not competing with anybody else. It's at your own timeline. So take your time. It is a big decision. So my biggest thing would be just to um, explore and taking that time to talk with other people. And, uh, you know, it'll eventually work out. Yeah, the students probably don't realize this. You said you went in undeclared, um, unsure of your major. I started my college career. I was undeclared for almost a full year before I picked a major as well. So um, I, I love that you're saying, you know, don't don't stress too much about it. Um, explore, take different classes, find your likes and your dislikes, and then you'll probably land in an area uh, that's a great fit for you. Um, we have another question related to kind of the majors and whatnot, and this is more so um, students are getting towards the end of their college career. This is from Lucy, a student at Xavier University in Cincinnati. And she's curious. She said that she's actually um, a Spanish and digital media major, double major there. Um, what type of majors or experience do you look for when maybe you're hiring, uh, you know, entry level or internship positions there at the Steelers? And maybe you could also speak broadly to just the wide range of careers that the Steelers would offer, not just in, in I guess, your area um, with the team? For sure. Thank you for that question, Lucy. Um, for me specifically, of course, it is important to be bilingual. Um, and I think that is something that if you are, you know, in a Spanish major as well, that's incredible that you're doing that. Um, you know, sports are global. The NFL is growing immensely. So if you speak a second language like Spanish, um, that's incredible. And pairing it with digital media as well, if you want to go in the 
space that we're in. I think that's an incredible combo. Um, but there's a wide range of different positions, especially on our department. We have photography, we have video producers, we have um, social media managers, uh, writers, talent. We work with radio talent, video talent. So there's different types of roles as well as data analysts. Uh, we, we're big in analytics as well, learning how everything that we do performs and how we're connecting with people. Those numbers are important. We work with uh, sales teams and sponsorship teams, people that work with influencers and big brands and how we connect to support each other, brands that you know align with the Steelers values and how we connect with the fans as well and how we provide a bigger experience, whether if it's through content and digital media um, to the stadium and what it means to go to a game from the moment you get your ticket. We work with email specialists as well. Uh, we have a PR department. So there's different options and uh, there isn't always a clear path on how you come into sports. There's people at the Steelers that came in um, as the PR intern, for example, and they're now in youth football and working with the community as well. Um, we have different people that came into content and marketing and are now doing PR or people that are in scouting and transition from scouting to business operations. So um, I think if you're just trying to get your foot in the door, uh, you of course have to come in in something that is a part of your skill set and your experience, but don't put a lot of pressure as well as to knowing exactly what area in sports you want to come in because you can transition. That opportunity is there and there is a lot more to learn once you are in it on how it all operates and how every department connects because it does connect. I feel like you just rattled off 20 or 30 different areas that the students could work in. And, and I love that you did that because um, that's something that we're really passionate about here at the Hall of Fame when we talk to students is just trying to open the, the minds and the eyes to the students of how many different opportunities there really are. I mean, you're right there uh, on the ground floor working with the Steelers. So you see it every day, uh, the different uh, departments and areas that people can work in. Um, but hopefully our students are getting just a greater sense of that uh, by hearing you speak to, speak to that. But I, I want to focus back in on kind of what you do in your career. Um, and, you know, with a title like you have, you know, with international content, managing that for the Steelers, what is your, you know, your day-to-day -day like? What is, what is that 10,000 foot view if you're on an elevator and someone says, hey, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I work for the Steelers. And then well, what do you do with the Steelers? How do you explain your day-to-day -day with the Pittsburgh Steelers in that role? Yeah, I'll try not to go off, Nathan. <laughs> Keep it yeah, concise. Um, but I think my day-to-day -day changes depending on the time of year that we're in. I think that's normal for everybody that works uh, in the NFL. If we're training camp during the season or the off season or during the draft, so it does kind of change right now in the off season. It's very much like a normal desk nine to five job. Once we're at training camp and in season, it varies. It's different. You know, we're in and out. We're working with players on, on an interview and on a photo shoot or going out to covering an event or um, just different activities. Um, in my case, traveling to Mexico we're abroad, we do some of those things in the off season as well during the season. So uh, it changes, but for the most part, when I'm in the building, I'm interacting with people that I work with in Mexico. We work with NFL Mexico and their staff. We have a local agency there. Um, but at the same time, I have to be in communication with everybody else in our building because it is important to everything that we do internationally reflects what we're doing internally and locally. So I am a part of multiple different teams, which is very fun for me because I am in the building interacting with the rest of our teammates and our staff uh, in season with our coaches and players. And then I get to, I guess, bring all of that to um, our meetings with our team in Mexico and NFL Mexico and um, I think that's key and really important because we authentically, um, I guess, align with the Steelers. If you are just 
somebody that's, you know, trying to grow the Steelers brand, but you live in Mexico and you don't get to experience what it's like to be in the building, there's going to be uh, a disconnect, I think. So uh, there's a lot of that. I go back and forth. I speak a lot of English and Spanish. Sometimes that gets to my head and I end up speaking Spanglish. Um, but it is really fun. And uh, I am working on social media with our social media team for the most part. I would say uh, that is my that is my team within the Steelers. And uh, it is really fun as well to see everything that they're doing locally and uh, whatever we can adapt to do internationally to also, um, you know, help with everything that we're doing to grow the Steelers brand. But uh, but yeah, for the most part, I would say primarily I'm in contact with people that are in Mexico or in other different parts of the world. I think you did a pretty good job of explaining that. Hopefully the students would agree. We have a good question. I think that's a good follow up for that from a student, Zoe. Uh, from Butler University here in Indiana. Um, and, and Zoe wants to know, what challenges do you face when trying to attract international fans to a team in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know, the, the Steelers? Um, is there a lot of micro-marketing or how, how do you get these worldwide campaigns to, to grow the Steelers brand internationally? You know, I am very blessed to come into this role with the Steelers because the Steelers are already a pretty established global brand. And we honestly, to this day, after six years, we all get surprised to see this, that we have fans in China and Australia and Germany and Mexico. Uh, and it's just truly incredible how just the history of the team and the sport, you know, has reached so many people in different parts of the world organically. Um, but the challenges come in where we actually try to stay engaged and connected with all these fans, especially during times when you're not winning championships. And, um, you know, so a lot of it is the historic ties that fans uh, around the world are connected to the Steelers. And of course, that's ultimately the goal, you know, from, of course, from a football team to continue to win those cha championships. But of course, in the meantime, for us, you know, we have to find ways to make sure that our fans are with us. And um, it is a it is a challenge because we have to stay true to who we are to authentically connect. But we're trying to learn why other than just the championships, why somebody from China is a Steelers fan. What are the values uh, from their culture that we also have in common with them and how we can merge, I guess, cultures together so that the Steelers continue to be relevant for a fan in China, but at the same time, on, in a different way, continue to be relevant for a fan in Mexico and in Germany. And it goes just, it's further than just the language that you're speaking. I think that is the first thing, of course, the minute your team starts to communicate in your language, that's automatically something that's going to draw you in. But then you also need to understand, you know, what everybody values and why the why, I guess, why other than winning a fan is staying connected with you. So you mentioned, you know, it helps that the Steelers have created a brand that they've been a winning franchise for so long. Um, they have the Super Bowl rings to back that up. Uh, but how do you decide you know i'm looking at some of the comments here it looks like we have some people you know tuning in from from mexico australia um you know how do you decide all right this is where we're going to try to dip our toe in the water next you know mexico china you've mentioned uh, you know the nfl plays games in europe on a pretty regular basis now between germany and england so how do you decide in your role and, and with your team like hey i think there's a fan base in china i think there's a fan base in australia or let's go create one. How do you make those decisions? Yeah, so thank God for technology and social media and analytics. I think that drives a lot of those decisions because we see the numbers, we see the demographics of where people live and where they're where they're from. Um, and I think the NFL has also opened a lot of doors for us through the international HMA program and the markets that the NFL has chosen to open doors for different teams. I think we are more conservative in that way where we're trying to master a market first and then we'll continue to go from there. 
Um, we want to learn as much as I we can from a culture, and then we'll continue to expand. Primarily, our first um, priority in our national market is Mexico. And then recently, or after that, we uh, decided to go and explore Germany. And we made that decision primarily based out of social media. And we tried a couple different things. We started to create content in Portuguese, targeting Brazil. We worked a little bit with NFL China. Uh, and then ultimately we decided to stick with Germany and we launched uh, Steelers Deutschland social accounts. And it was through that, seeing the engagement, the numbers from trial and error. And it's also important to learn how accessible NFL games are in a foreign market because ultimately that, you know, this is why we're doing what we're doing for the game. So it also doesn't make sense to uh, be targeting an area where they don't easily have an access, have access to watch uh, an NFL game or your team play. So the NFL has opened a lot of doors for that with international game pass as well. If you're in Germany or China, you can purchase uh, and subscribe and watch every single NFL game. So there's multiple components that help us make this decisions, but uh, like I said, primarily is through analytics and data. That makes sense to me. Do you have, I mean, and it, this can be a personal dream down the road. Like, is there a spot that the Steelers don't really have a presence based on what you know that you're like, man, it'd be so cool if we could like get a fan base, a group of people, uh, a presence in fill in the blank country. Yeah, you know, because we do so much in Spanish, primarily targeting Mexico, but there's so many other countries, of course, that speak the language. So we get uh, tons of messages from people in Panama, people in Guatemala, people in Colombia that say like, hey, there's Steelers Nation in our countries too, like we're here and they're trying to get our attention as well. So I think if we can, you know, have a bigger presence throughout Latin America would be incredible. And that's one thing that I try to do as well, being from Honduras. Um, football is not huge in Honduras. So I try as well to grow it there. And I think uh, there's a couple more people now uh, that that follow the Steelers and the NFL there uh, than a couple of years back. But I think there's just so much opportunity just with, you know, one language we can stay connected with this market that we value so much Mexico, but at the same time, not ignore the rest of the world and the other countries that speak the same language. So you mentioned Honduras, which is where you're from originally, um, yeah. where you, where you grew up. What does um, growing up in Honduras, how did that shape you into the woman that you are, uh, the professional that you are today working for the Steelers? Um. You know, I don't think I would be in this position if I weren't from Honduras, because I think I've developed a lot of unique skills that are unique for this role, um, primarily just being able to relate and connect from people uh, from different countries, as well as my experience being from Honduras, but moving to the U.S. and adapting to a different culture. But um, Honduras is an incredible and beautiful country, but it is a country as well that it's also uh, slow in development. There's a lot of growth and a lot of things that just, um, you know, growth is just slow in Honduras. A lot of things don't change. And I think that's a goal that I always had at the back of my mind. The day I can bring back something uh, special to Honduras, I will do that. And I came into the U.S. thinking that with that everything that I was going to learn here, I was going to bring it back to Honduras and contribute to that development. So I think that's something that drives me here. What else can I learn here? Um, so that drive, I guess, being from Honduras is something that has helped me being here in the NFL and it's part of who I am here. Yeah, and I think you it makes sense why, you know, your experience kind of prepared you uh, for the role that, you know, maybe somebody that grew up in the States wouldn't have those same type of experiences and the same ability to connect with people from different cultures the way that you are able to do. Um, so obviously, the Steelers, unfortunately for you, are not playing in the Super Bowl on Sunday. Um, but I wanted to talk about this uh, at least briefly because in, in our museum here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we have a whole gallery, the Lamar Hunt Super Bowl gallery, dedicated to the history of that game. Um, so if, if you're a student or a fan and you're able to come visit 
um, definitely uh, come check us out here in Canton, Ohio. We would love to have you come visit. Um, but part of that, it mentions that um, in 2007, that Super Bowl, Super Bowl 42, it set the record. There were 223 international broadcasts of the Super Bowl in over 30 different languages back in 2007. Um, last year, I looked it up. There were 208 different countries that were able to watch the Super Bowl. Um, so again, the Steelers aren't in the Super Bowl. That would probably make it a little bit easier to tap into all that access that the Super Bowl has. But what are some ways like tangibly throughout the season that you're working to make the Steelers more accessible week to week so fans internationally can follow the team um, the same way that, you know, here stateside, I think about, you know, my favorite team. I'm getting like the updates on my phone. So what are ways that you're trying to do that? and make it more practical for the fans internationally to follow the Steelers. Yeah, so of course, you mentioned all those broadcast networks. I think, of course, that is the very first thing that every team that is trying to expand, uh, you know, their international effort is the very first thing that you need to put a lot of work into. We have an incredible Spanish radio team, uh, people that are well known in Latin America, people that have worked for ESPN calling primetime games, people that have a lot of experience in that area. So we have an incredible radio team. Uh, it's actually a really, really fun broadcast. We share a lot of our highlights weekly. Um, so I think that is the very first thing in an area that we put a lot of work into building a strong uh, radio broadcast team. It's highly produced and we have our radio team present at every single game. So um our Spanish radio broadcast is available on the Steelers app if you're in Mexico on our website and through a radio partner that we have in Mexico. And the guys that are calling the game are in the stadium in every single game, home and away. So I think that's very special because they get to bring that in, uh, I guess, share that energy through the radio broadcast. Um, and then same as well that through game day coverage, we are covering every single aspect of the day, pre-game, during the game, post-game, on every single social media platform. I think we now have four or five Spanish uh, dedicated social media platforms where we do full coverage of the game and every single activity during the week, press conferences, um, post-game analysis, pre-game, looking ahead to the next game, analysis, where we share injury reports, where we share stats, where we share all of this stuff. So fans feel ready and prepared and highly educated going into the next game and that they are, are fully informed with what's happening with the team with transactions as well. Um, so we put a lot of work into our social media and digital as well as the Steelers mobile app. We send push notifications for every new piece of content that is out there. And we're covering every single area from uh, written content to video and audio as well. We have a weekly podcast uh, to follow along with the um, radio broadcast from the game. So we're covering every single area. So if your preference is to read or watch a video or listen to a podcast, we have all this content going out in all these different uh, in all these different ways. I love that. And and I want to jump back into some student questions. That's what I'm kind of looking off screen here uh, to get a sense for what we got, because we've got a lot of participation. I want to thank the students for that. Um, and this student, this question comes from a student named Aaron um, from Saddleback College out in California. Um, Aaron's curious. Um, and I'll just read it directly what he says. What is it like working with the Steelers producing content, covering different events and working specifically with sponsors at home and abroad? Uh, Aaron, it's a lot sometimes. It can be a little overwhelming and it is, I think it's something that everybody that work in that works in sports does. We all wear multiple hats. Um, so it is a little crazy sometimes trying to do all these things and make it all make sense and bring bringing things together, but that's where you rely on your team. Um, and just maintaining good communication to make sure that, you know, all these different areas are covered. But I think that is something that also has contributed to my growth that I 
came in to do so many different things and wear different hats and you eventually you know, learn who to go to for what and how to go, you know, how to prioritize what you need to do right away, what need, what need, what can wait. Um, so I think that is also a just really fun thing um, from our jobs that we get to do different things and we're in and out and working with different people. But it is important to be able to do that because at the end of the day, it all comes together. So it is important to know even if you're not the person directly, you know, um, working with, directly with the sponsor, but you at least need to know how the person that is doing it works with that person because you eventually uh, will connect with uh, with the sponsorship team, even if you're not the person talking to the actual sponsor. So it is important to know um, who to go to for what and how to bring everything together. For sure. Our next question is from... Sean, um, Sean said last night at the NFL honors, uh, the league recognized members of the Ukrainian American Football League um, in your work working internationally and building the Steelers brand internationally. Do you see a lot of these leagues being created um, where they're playing, I guess, what we would call American football um, in other parts of the world? And I'm guessing that makes your job easier as the, you know, the fandom grows and people want to play the game. But do you see a lot of that in your work? Yeah, for sure, especially now because the NFL and us and so many other teams have different uh, markets. The sport is just growing globally, so we do see that. We do see, um, and as well, Fantasy League, I think, uh, just contributes to that and people in different parts of the world wanting to play the game and bringing uh, people together to build their own leagues. We do see a lot of that, and 100%, it makes our job a lot easier because um, if you're playing the sport as well, that's automatically going to spark, you know, that for fans wanting to follow the sport and pick a team that they want to follow and uh, players that they like and players that they want to model their game behind and play like them. So uh, that does help a lot to see how that is growing and people actually playing the game in different parts of the world. That makes sense. That makes sense. I, I would think, like you said, if people are playing it, it's going to spark a, a fandom in them. And then then it's like, all right, what team am I going to root for? So that that gives you a, a customer right there. If we can convince them to be a Steelers fan, um, then you're in a good spot. Our next student question. This is from Zach, uh, a freshman at Rutgers, uh, kind of there in New Jersey, um, looking for internships over the summer. Um, Zach's actually only a freshman right now. Curious if the NFL hires students that young. And then you actually were an intern with the Steelers. So maybe you can kind of just speak in a whole the the value of having a quality internship. So first, um, what type of internship positions are available? And then just the value to having a good internship as a student. For sure. Um, I think if you want to get a full-time internship, for the most part, these are postgraduate. And I think that very few people come into the NFL post-college with a, already a full-time role. Most people come in as interns. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think for that, it is important to have relevant internship experience while you're in school. If you are in a school that has an athletic department, I think that is the very first place that you should start and get a job on campus to get, um, you know, your foot in the door in sports. If that's not a possibility, definitely look into different teams and the NFL. They always, including the Steelers, uh, there's always open positions primarily for training camp. I think a lot of teams um, hire a lot of interns for that because, of course, there's a lot more staff, a lot more players around that time. So, um, there is extra help that is needed. And I think that is at any capacity. If you're a freshman, a sophomore, uh, you can look into those um, summer internships or your local football team, uh, wherever you are. If they have seasonal positions, look into those. I do believe uh, most of those tend to be for juniors or seniors. Um, so, but you never know, just give it a try. The worst that you can hear is a no or a not yet. And you wait a little bit, you wait a year and you get in the next year. So, uh, it is worth the try. 
I interned uh, for the Steelers when I was in college as well. So actually, my very first internship with the Steelers was during the summer, during training camp when I was a sophomore. And I did that for uh, over a month and a half. So um, I think primarily those would be the very first uh, options that most teams will have available in the NFL during the summer. Where where do our students... um from your experience, where do they need to go look to find these postings? Uh, what, what would you advise them there? Teamworkonline.com is where, uh, or the NFL careers website, both of those are the very first uh, outlets where teams and the NFL post every opening. And I think they go up throughout the year. If mm-hmm. you are daily on it, check it every day. There's always something new and not just the NFL, but every other single sports team or sports agency. It is just where everybody posts um, their openings on sports. So, and you don't, if you want to work in the NFL, also, you don't have to start in the NFL. I think every, any sports experience that you can get will be relevant. If you're starting with golf or basketball or, you know, covering your, women's basketball team in college or men's golf or tennis, I think it all, it all connects and it all, it's all relevant. So uh, you don't have to be tied to a sport specifically. If you want to be in the NFL, it doesn't have to be football. So just explore um, all of those options, but yes, teamwork online and most summer internships for the Steelers and the NFL, I think are posted around March and April. You know, you answered my next question there. I was going to ask how important it was. If the dream is to work in football, how important is it that the first internship is in football? But I think the students get the point. Uh, Any sports experience you can get is going to be relevant and and you can still keep that dream down the line to eventually get into the NFL. if That's what you believe in and that's what you want to do. Um, Another question here. uh, How common is your type of role? Are there other people um, for NFL specifically, other NFL franchises that are, are are doing the same type of work that you're doing. Um, do you work together ever with them? Um, how how do you see that working uh, across the league? It's not super common yet. Uh, I'm definitely not the only one. I think at this point, at least half of the 32 teams have a similar role to mine. But I think most teams uh, will eventually have one. I think that grows every year. Um, so it's not super common, but I think eventually everybody will have a a similar role. Um, and specifically, I, I'm not sure if every department around the NFL is the same way, but on our end with content and marketing and social media, we tend to work together, uh, and we stay in communication with the NFL and with different people around the league, especially in something that is this new. Um, we're all trying to learn and pick each other brains and learn from what one person is doing and what we're doing. So we do go back and forth and share our experiences with, with different teams. Of course, there is a fine line, uh, because we are competing at the end of the day, you know, we, we want to win a fan. Oh, you know, we want to get everybody to be Steelers fans, not a Bengals fans. Right. But, uh, at the end of the day, we do connect and we do, um, take feedback from each other and share and support each other in a way uh, with what we're learning. That definitely would be a a fine line to walk with your career in particular. You know, it's one thing like, oh, we hosted this really cool event. You go host the event in your city, but it's like you're competing for fans. You want people to be bought into your team. So that would be a fine line. That would be uh, challenging probably at times. But uh, the next question I have for you, and I think this is important one to cover, uh, a lot of people, when they think of the NFL or they think of sports in general, uh, you know, they think of the the old boys club or it, it's predominantly going to be men working. And there there has been a shift. And I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but there are definitely a lot more females and women working uh, in the NFL. Um, but what type of advice would you give for, uh, you know, whether it's an elementary student, you know, a young girl or it's a college student, what advice would you give for uh, future women uh, that are that pushing to work into the, the sports world? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely 
grown a lot, especially over the past, I think at least during my time with the Steelers in the past six years, uh, um, we've seen, there's just a lot more women in the building and around the league and officiating and coaching and scouting. So there's a lot of room. So I don't think if you're a woman aspiring to be in sports, um, you know, there is room for you and we need more of you to come join us. So continue to pursue that and work hard and for, focus on what your goals are, go, sorry, your goals are and, uh, your experience. But, um, but yes, I don't think that's something that it's limiting anymore. You know, the doors are open for women. And if I'm here, you can be here too. For sure. For sure. That's inspiring. Now I want to transition and and hopefully this is fun. Uh, we've had a lot of, you know, pretty, uh, serious conversation, uh, more heavy, you know, here's your advice. Here's how you get a job. But, uh, we got some rapid fire questions for you. Uh, some kind of career related, some, uh, more just, you know, kind of keep you on your toes. So we'll see how this goes. Um, rapid fire. I got seven questions for you. Question number one, LinkedIn. Is it a great way to network or just another social media app? It depends how you use it. It can become just another social media app. Uh, but if you're intentional with it and if you're smart with it, it is an incredible tool to network. GPA. Should you put it on your resume or should you just keep it off? Um, I think if it's impressive and if you are going into your first job out of college, I would keep it. If you have relevant experience during college and if it's not as impressive, I would leave it out. Social media accounts. Do you keep them public or do you keep them private? Your personal accounts. My personal or well, advice? What would, tell, what would you tell a student? You know, because... Go for it. What would you tell a student? Do they keep them public or do they keep them private? If you want to use them for professional purposes, of course, keep them uh, public. If you, you know, if it's to stay connected with friends and family, keep them private. But either way, be mindful because people are looking at your social media, even if it's private, it's the internet. And I don't believe that it's everything that goes on the internet is fully private. So just be mindful, whether it's public or private. Great advice. Jeans at work, uh, all day, every day, never, or just casual Fridays? I love jeans. So if it were up to me, I would wear jeans every day. Uh, coin toss here. Are you choosing heads or are you choosing tails? Tails. Tails never fails. You score a touchdown in an NFL game. You get to play, Maria. What is your go-to touchdown celebration when you score? You know, I always thought I would try and do a gritty, but I don't know that it would come off right and I would end up embarrassing myself. So I would probably do a Lambo leap and just jump into the crowd mm. and celebrate with the fans. I like that. I'm a Packers fan, so I can respect that. Um, and I also can't dance, so I'm not doing a gritty. <laughs> uh, last question. Again, it's not the Steelers, but do you have a pick? for the Super Bowl, the Chiefs or the Eagles? Do you got a team that you think is going to win here on Sunday? You know what? I got to I gotta go with Patrick Mahomes. I think the Chiefs are going to win. I agree with you, but again, I don't know. So we'll see. The Eagles got a pretty good defense. Hopefully it's a good game. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Maria, for being a part of the program. Uh, I do have one last question, though. Um, we've talked a lot about majors. We've talked a little bit about um, you know, just your job and your career. Uh, what is that one piece of advice you would give uh, students that are watching just related to um, trying to better themselves and trying to put themselves in a position uh, to have a job like you working in the sports industry? What's that that best piece of advice you have for us? Um, you know, of course, try to get relevant experience early on. Like I said, if you have an athletic department on campus, pursue that and internships are really important while you're in college networking as well. But, uh, secondly, for me, I think it's just staying true to yourself and being patient with what you want, not settling and not being afraid of your background, embracing every single part of you, because I think at the end of the day, that's what is going to make you unique and set you part of everybody else. Love that advice. I think it's great for our students. I know we didn't spend a lot of time 
discussing networking and tricks with networking, but I can tell our students this. If you look in the comment section, um, if we didn't get to your question today, because I know we didn't get to all of them, please you know, feel free to connect with Maria on LinkedIn. Uh, send your questions there. Let her know that you saw her on Before the Snap. If you have questions for us here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you can reach out to us at education at profootballhof.com. Shoot us an email. Let us know uh, what question you might have or career advice you might uh, want, want to tap into. We would love to be a resource. I know here at the Hall, and I know Maria would love to be a resource for you guys as students um as well so again thank you students for tuning in and watching the program maria thank you for spending time uh, with us today and answering all these questions we've really uh enjoyed it thank you nathan like i said i was honored to be on this program and like nathan mentioned uh i'm pretty active on linkedin and twitter so i am here reach out with any questions you have i will do my best to help awesome well uh, we've said our thank yous. I want to just remind everybody, you know, stay tuned in and locked into uh, what we have to offer here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame across our social media channels. You know, last night at NFL Honors, the uh, newest class, the class of 23, 2023 was announced. Um, so there's a lot of content related to that going out right now. Also tap in, see what the Steelers are doing. You know, see what they're out there putting out there on social media. I'm sure they would love for you guys to follow and, and see what's up in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, podcast listeners, I always got to do a little plug here. We have a, a great one here at the Hall of Fame, the Mission Podcast. So if you're interested in that, uh, take a listen. Um, and then as far as future before the SNAP programs, we appreciate you guys watching this week with Maria. Next week, uh, we actually will have the week off. We're not going to be here on the 17th, but we'll be back on February 24th uh, with Carly. Uh, I got to make sure I say her last name right. Uh, Panakia. Panakia. I think I'm saying that right, Carly, but we'll find out on the 24th. Carly Panakia from the Philadelphia Eagles will be here. She might be really, really excited because the Eagles won a Super Bowl. She might be in the dumps. We'll find out uh, here on the 24th. Uh, so hopefully you guys will tune back in to that next episode of Before the Snap. Once again, thank you, Maria, for being a part of the program. Students, thank you for being here today. And hopefully we'll see you guys uh, next time. Um